Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you all my propagations that I currently have in water and perlite. These are the two methods that I use to propagate all my houseplants with really good success. When I gathered up all these cuttings for this video, I didn't realize I had this many, so it might take a little while to go through. Probably going to start with the water propagated cuttings first, and then I'll show the perlite afterwards. But I'm also going to share uh, some things that I've learned along the way that um, are key for these propagations to survive in their propagation containers, whether that's water or perlite, and then be able to transition them nicely from the, uh, their propagation medium into soil or whatever it is you choose. So let's get into it. As you can see, I have a bunch of different types of plants currently rooting in water, and not only is it super easy to propagate uh, most plants in water, it's extremely satisfying because you get to see the root growth as well. Like check out these roots on this uh, Peperomia obtusifolia. This has been in water for probably like six months. Um, the roots, yeah, it's it's really large. This definitely needed to be potted up in some soil uh, quite a while ago. I just kept it in water because I really didn't know what I was gonna do with it. So uh, it's a project that I'm gonna be working on with some propagation and that sort of thing. Um, here is my string of hearts. I made a video recently about how to propagate this. Uh, again, these roots, uh, they are definitely okay or ready to be potted up in some uh, soil, but uh, so for whatever reason, I've just kept them in uh, the water so far. Um, here is a uh, Scandapsis exotica cutting that I took a little while ago. It's got a nice root there and uh, some new growth. Here is a Philodendron micans cutting that I took recently. Someone on, I think it was YouTube or Instagram, told me to uh, take a cutting and place it on one of those wood planks for uh, one of my ongoing projects. So I did take the cutting, whoever that was. Thank you for that suggestion. And then here is a uh, lipstick, uh, Aeschinanthus uh, Mona Lisa. It is that plant up there. I'm just trying to root this one in water just to fill in a couple little bare areas at the back. I find these lip stick plants they do root in water but it does take uh, quite a long time compared to um, how like a philodendron or a pothos would root. So I'm going to stick these back in water. I can root scandapsis in water but um, I find that these cuttings do a lot better in perlite. Okay so here's the obtrusifolia. Put that aside. Here is another lipstick plant. This is the Jaffero Lapis, I believe it's called. It is a smaller leafed uh, lipstick plant. I had a large pot of it, but this one dried out really fast. I couldn't keep it uh, watered enough, and basically half the plant shriveled up and died. So I took some cuttings in order to salvage it, and again, uh, one of the cuttings had roots but the rest did not, and I don't know if you can see or not, but some of the leaves see if it'll focus here. Um, some of the leaves are getting pretty wrinkled. So I don't know if these cuttings will survive in water or not. Here are a few uh, jewel orchids that I'm currently propagating in water for another uh, little project. I have a jewel orchid terrarium. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna be testing this out as I've never propagated a jewel orchid before. So I got three different varieties. I just stuck them in the soil, just making sure that their nodes or like one of these leaf nodes is submerged underwater. Oops, that one just fell right in. So like this right here, this is a node and here's another one up there. So just make sure that that is submerged underwater and roots should grow from there. This one only looks like it's got a node up here. So tuck that one a little bit deeper. Um, here is a mixed jar that I currently have upstairs. This is a Hawaiian pothos. Uh, Hawaiian golden pothos that I recently put in water. Looks like maybe getting some small roots. And then I just have some other uh, Cebu blue in here that again for my little plant project, um, I'm gonna be putting these up on a uh, wood stake. Also I have tucked in here are some neon pothos. Um, and I think that's all I have in here for right now. So I guess I'll talk about uh, some of the things that I do with these propagations as I'm showing them. The most important thing for any propagation, whether it's in water or perlite, is you have to make sure that it is in a bright sunny location. Most of these water propagated cuttings, as well as my uh, perlite prop boxes, they're upstairs near my south facing window. Some of the ones that are a little more delicate like this, I will kind of tuck behind uh, some existing plants on a plant table. I'll try to insert a clip of how I uh, lay out all my prop boxes and containers, but you must have them in a bright location, getting lots of sunlight. Otherwise, the roots will probably be a little bit slower, even to the point where it might rot in water before it uh, gets some roots. So just make sure that you have it in a bright sunny area. Here is my philodendron uh, Brazil that I'm uh, rooting in water. I wanna make an entirely new plant. Oh, there's lots of roots in here. So I'm not even gonna take these out, but lots of roots, lots of new growth. 
and tuck those back in. Here is my first ever water propagated uh, jade succulent. Most times I just take the cutting, uh, let it callus over on the end, then I'll literally stick it back in the soil. The plant will start to develop roots um, based on not watering the plant like the soil or anything like that, but it draws off or pulls all the moisture and nutrients from within its leaves in order to push out roots. So I'm pretty, this is pretty neat to be uh, rooting it in water. I didn't realize it would work so well, um, but it might have a tough transition once I put it in soil just because succulents, they don't like to be in wet or soggy soil for very long. So this might be a tough transition from water to soil for succulents. So I would only recommend um, propagating uh, directly in soil. I've had really good success. Here is a couple other larger pothos. I'm gonna show the roots on these guys. Um, I think I've recently put these in, so might not be much on them. Um, these are from a recent uh, pothos project. Also, I took some cuttings off of my larger uh, golden pothos back here. And these are the cuttings. Like, look at these beefy stems. These things are chunky. Um, so no real major roots yet, but it does have a bunch of existing aerial roots. So um, all the new roots will pop out where these aerial roots have been forming from. So let's take a look at some other ones here. Um, minimal root growth. So I'll put these back, but look at the size of these stems. Like they're huge, super chunky. This little leaf I cut off, so it'll just kind of fall off. So that's what I'm gonna do with that one. Just put it back in the water. Here is my Ficus Elastica Melanie. This has some pretty awesome roots on this. I've been uh, rooting this in water for a few months. I'm going to be potting one of these up in the soil and possibly doing like a little outside experiment uh, in the summer. Once spring hits, I might uh, pop this one outside just to see how fast it grows. Come on. I wanna put these both back in at the same time, but I can't get these roots in. Okay, so those are back in. So yeah, these are all my current water propagated uh, projects, I guess. So yeah, you wanna make sure that you have them in a bright area. I change out the water once a week. So I'll just uh, dump out the existing water and fill it up with some fresh water. Um, a couple of other things I'll talk about too when I'm uh, talking about the uh, perlite prop box that you should do when um, propagating in there. Otherwise, whoops, gotta put this guy back in. I guess I should show these roots down here as well. These are the uh, neon pothos. Looks like they got some decent roots. The uh, Cebu blue. These are fresh cuttings as well, so it doesn't look like there's much in there, but I find it so satisfying to look at the roots through these clear containers. That's one of the fun things about rooting in water is you can see the uh, actual progression, whereas if you just put it in soil, you don't actually get to see the roots. Here are my two propagation boxes, and before I open them up, I wanna share one of the most important things uh, for these prop boxes is that you wanna make sure these sides and the top are clear. It can be like a colored top or colored lid, but uh, you just wanna make sure that it's not uh, completely opaque. You wanna make sure that it does, uh, or it is able to get light through the top as well as through the sides, and uh, yeah, that's probably the most important thing. You wanna make sure that these cuttings get a lot of light. So I do have a couple videos on on how to set up a perlite uh, prop box as well as how to maintain it. I might touch on a few things uh, throughout this video, but for the most part, I'm just gonna be showing what I currently have in the prop boxes. So let's open it up. I will say that um, I do open these prop boxes up um, maybe once a week or so, just let them get some fresh air, just so it doesn't get uh, stagnant or like very musty smelling. So I'll let it get some fresh air. And one of the ways that I determine whether the uh, there's enough moisture in this box is by condensation on the side or even on the top of the lid and then just feeling the perlite. So if you uh, squish perlite, there should be, you can see a little bit of water or moisture on my finger there. So I know this is still well watered. I don't have any sitting water like in the bottom of the perlite. So you wanna make sure that it's not sitting in water. It's just damp, I guess. So right now I have a bunch of Hoya Polynera cuttings. They've been in here for about a week and look at these roots. It does so well. Hoyas do so well in these prop boxes. See a little root on the bottom of this. I'm just gonna stuff it back in. So I just make a small little hole and I cover up the stem like that. Uh, let's pull a couple more out. 
uh, maybe like a tiny little root there. Here is a Parasitica heart leaf. It's got some nice roots on there. Just gonna stick that back in. This one can definitely be potted up in some soil. Here is another Hoya Polyner that uh, it's been in here for quite some time and you can see it's got some pretty nice roots. So this is ready to be potted up in some soil as well. Just gonna tuck that back in there. Just make sure all those roots, I'll do it later, but to make sure those roots are covered up by the perlite just so it doesn't dry out. Um, I do have a couple Crimson Princess cuttings in here. You can see getting some nice roots. And just tuck it just below the uh, perlite uh, soil line. This one here too, let's get some uh, decent roots. Hoyas do really well in this perlite prop box. All my cuttings, like everything that I take does really well in perlite. I highly recommend using perlite as a propagation medium. And the thing that I love the most about using perlite is when you transition it to soil, um, using the perlite, just because it is kind of a nice chunky mix, it, um, it makes for a really easy soil transition because if you use, say like a water propagated cutting, like this uh, succulent here, or these uh, philodendrons, um, sometimes they can have a little bit of a difficult transition just because um, water, it's obviously not dense like soil, and you have to keep the soil probably consistently wet for about two weeks just so that these water roots don't dry out. I find that that doesn't happen when you propagate in perlite. They, uh, they transition much easier into uh, soil. So that's why I like using perlite. So um, this sad little cutting, oh, it's got some rot on it, is actually my Syngonium batik. It didn't last very long. So I chopped it up. I took a single node here um, this I'll have to cut back so it doesn't rot anymore, but you can see um, it is getting a new root. So it will eventually, oh, right there, it will start to push out some new growth. There is a new little growth point right there. Come on, focus. Right there. I'll put that one back. I'll have to clean up that cutting in a little bit here. These boxes are side by side upstairs, and this one is kind of my more exciting box, I guess. I had a uh, Diefenbachia sterling that uh, basically died back, so I took um, two stem cuttings. So this is how you root a Diefenbachia. It's got another growth point as well, some nice roots. So this can be potted up in some soil right away as well. Here's another cutting. And then I had a couple little uh, Cebu Blue wet sticks that I put in here and you can see it's obviously got uh, a root on there but it's got this tiniest cute little leaf and I got a couple cuttings uh, so there's a couple more Cebu Blue. I believe these are the same just these little wet sticks it's got a nice root there as well as a new growth point so if you don't have a leaf and you just have a, uh, a stem with some nodes on it stick it in the prop box and you should be okay so yeah a couple more Cebu Blue I have no idea what this is. It might be a philodendron micans. I'm not too sure. It was just, again, I threw a bunch of wet sticks in there. It's definitely not a Cebu Blue, but I don't know what this is. It's nothing exotic because I haven't put anything really expensive in here. Um, here is uh, an Aglinema. I'm not too sure which one this is, Snow White or something Snow. Um, I overwatered this one by mistake. It, uh, it rotted, so I cut the stem back. This was the only piece that I could salvage, and it's getting a, a new root there. It might take a, well, it will take a long time for it to get some new growth. Um, over here is an Alocasia Silver Dragon. This was a uh, corm or a little bulb that I found in uh, soil when I repotted uh, my original or larger one. So I have found two corms in there. I put it in perlite. This one's been in here for like months. You can see it's getting a new little growth point there, but this has some really nice, oh, come on, holy cow. It's got some long roots. So I'm gonna have to pot this one up in some soil. Holy smokes. Okay, I didn't realize it was that long. Okay, so yeah, lots of roots there. I'll have to put that back in a second, but this little guy right here is a Philodendron Lupinum, I think it's called. This is actually a friend of mine. Uh, she gave it to me as a little project uh, to help her root this. Basically, she said it would uh, get a new leaf and it would drop a leaf, but it was not growing any new roots. 
I've had this in my prop box for about two weeks now, and there is, I don't know if you can see, but the tiniest little root popping through right here. Oops, get out of the way, right there. So it is finally getting some roots on this thing. So once it is large enough that I can pot up, I'll, I'll do that for her and give that back. But uh, it's got the cutest little leaf. Why is it not focusing? I'm just gonna stick that back in and just put the perlite around. Um, this is a Diefenbachia reflector. I took it off of, um, there was like a little side growth on this plant here. So I'm hoping that it grows into a larger plant, but there is no variegation on the leaves. It does have some roots, some pretty nice roots, but there's no variegation uh, on the leaves. I don't know if it's uh, too young. I don't know if it uh, has to be a little bit more mature before it gets the uh, bright green speckling on the leaves, but I hope I can uh, grow this into another mature plant like this one. So yeah, that's currently what's in my uh, perlite prop boxes. I, I absolutely love this method. And like I said, I just pay attention to the condensation on the sides. Um, yeah, it's pretty well uh, maintenance free. Um, I'll just pay attention to the perlite. If it needs uh, to be watered, I'll just use a misting bottle and just lightly mist the uh, top of the perlite. Just again, making sure that it doesn't pool at the bottom, but that's pretty much it. This is a, a really easy, effective way of uh, rooting plants. And then, like I said, it's uh, really good at the uh, soil transition as well. So I think that's pretty well all I want to talk about. If you have a plant living in water longer term, or if you want to keep it in water, you definitely can, but just make sure that you provide uh, nutrients to that water. So whether it's like a hydroponic type solution, um, or if you're using just a regular houseplant fertilizer, that's what I'll do with uh, some of these. Um, not when they're like just starting to root, but if they've been in water for months and months, um, you might want to give them just a very small diluted um, house plant fertilizer, mix it up in some water, and then just uh, give a little bit in the, in the water. That's what I do. I don't have a specific ratio or anything like that, but it'll be a very diluted solution just so you don't burn the roots. But if you want to keep something in water longer term, you definitely can, but just uh, remember that uh, in order for the plant to grow, it needs that uh, sunlight to photosynthesize, but it also needs those uh, nutrients uh, to help push out uh, new growth. And that's why you fertilize with uh, regular house plants as well, because uh, it pulls the nutrients and moisture from the soil, uses that in uh, combination or conjunction with uh, sunlight to uh, photosynthesize and uh, produce new growth. So yeah, just if you have in water long term, make sure that you provide uh, some nutrients. But otherwise, I think that's it. Just have it in a bright spot. Um, that's pretty well the only major important thing is uh, having it in a bright location. Otherwise, I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below. Um, let me know what type of propagation method is successful for you. I know a lot of people use uh, sphagnum moss as a, a very effective uh, propagation method, but I don't like when you have to remove it from um, the roots. Specifically Hoyas, they have very small roots. It's, it's a nightmare to, uh, to remove completely. But again, you can grow plants long-term in sphagnum. Okay, now I'm getting off topic. Uh, okay, now I'm just rambling on, but uh, yeah, this is another effective method. So let me know down in the comment section what you guys use, but otherwise, thanks again for watching my video. Take care, everyone. Bye.